Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share another scrapbook process video with you. And I should say hello strangers, it's been so long between process videos for me. Um, I am so happy to be back here today and today's layout that I am sharing was created for Coco Vanilla Studio and it's using the fabulous No Limits collection. Now the photo that I'm going to be documenting today is a photo of my hubby and my two sons that I took when we went out to dinner recently and oh, I was really drawn to using the paper that I've chosen for my background which is called Eclipse. It's gorgeous, it's got that sort of, it's like a reverse sunset almost, it's beautiful. Um, I was drawn to using that paper because of the navy blue shirts that my sons were wearing and I thought it would work really well with the colour of this paper. So the first thing I did was obviously I trimmed off the branding strip from my paper but the next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to just add a little bit of something to the edges of those little rays there that you can see. So I pulled out my Stabilo um, All Pencil, it's a white one, just to add a little bit of extra contrast between those different colours. Now it, I'm hoping that the different colours are showing up in the footage there because it's quite subtle but they do sort of go from lighter blue at the bottom up to a much deeper dark indigo like navy right at the top where the stars are. So as I said I've added that little bit of extra contrast in there using my Stabilo All Pencil and now I am working on some paper layers to go in behind my photo. So I had a scrap of that brick patterned paper there that I had used on a previous project so I decided to make use of that and I also wanted to use the wood grain paper just to bring a little bit of warmth into the page and because there was a little bit of wood in the background of the photo it might be difficult to see but as I said it, I mainly wanted it to bring that touch of warmth to the page. Now what I'm doing here is I'm adding some frayed gauze to add some texture to my page. So you can see that I've got the papers stacked up on top of each other. Then I'm adding the frayed gauze on top and I'm just securing everything down using my long armed stapler. Now I do prefer to use the method of using the long arm stapler because it saves me from going back and adding tape adhesive like between the layers I can just secure everything down into a stack straight onto my page and I don't have to worry about it. Now I've added the photo on top there with scrap cardboard on the back of it just to pop it up a little bit from those background layers and I have also used my Helma 450 which is my preferred adhesive to stick over the top of that gauze because I find a lot of my other adhesives they don't they just don't like to stick over the top of the gauze. So for this page I was going with the title of Love You but I was using that chipboard piece that you can see there which says to the moon and back sort of as my subtitle on the page. So I wanted to run the die cut words Love You straight across the top of the photo and then have that to, to the moon and back chipboard piece somewhere close by. I needed to make sure that the two pieces were almost connected just to ensure that really when you do read the entire title it reads love you to the moon and back. So on the chipboard sticker sheet where I took that piece from the to the moon and back there's also another nested frame that sits around it that you can see I've got there. Um, I pulled it out and I thought it would make a really great moon on the page. So I backed it with a little bit of pattern paper which I just trimmed and just used some liquid adhesive to stick it behind it, much like backing a cut file. And I'm going to pop that sort of in the background at the top there, off in the stars, just to act as the moon on the page. Because I thought with the reference of the word moon on the page and with this starry sky in the background, that it would sit quite well there. So what I'm actually fiddling around with here is I'm looking at what I may possibly use as my embellishments. Now the thing that was challenging me here was that I had the the big round moon on the page there. I also had that 
um, embellishment, the chipboard one, to the moon and back, which was also round. And I had a little bit of a flip through the ephemera pack there just to see what else I could pull out with some roundness to it. At first, I pulled out the globe, which you can see sitting there on my desk, but the colours, it just didn't quite work. It popped a little bit too much. I needed something that melded more into the background. So I ended up using that little die cut sort of starry piece there that says unlimited on it. Um, you'll see when I bring that back in. What I'm actually doing at the moment is those two words, love you. I have added some foam tape behind them just to help pop them up from the page. They were getting a little bit lost just sitting flat on the page. And because my other layers were raised up from the background and because I was working with a dimensional embellishment like chipboard, I just wanted to bring those words up from the background as well. So I have added my die cut titles above my photo there. I'm now working on the clusters to go around my photo. Now I was working with what I usually do, which is three main embellishment clusters. So you can see I've got that chipboard to the moon and back piece there in the top right hand corner. Now, although this piece was working as part of my title, it was also forming one of the clusters around my photo. I was then looking to create a cluster, a smaller cluster, just on the left-hand side of my photo, and then something along the bottom edge of my photo. So that if you drew a line between those three points, the focal point of the page, which is the photo, would fall between those points. Now, for argument's sake, I had to ignore the fact that I did have this large moon up on my page. But you, if you have a look at where those circular pieces are sitting, so you've got the moon at the top there, you've got the chipboard moon on the right there, and you've got that unlimited die cut down the bottom, that forms a secondary visual triangle. You can see it if you join those three circles together that that also places my photo in between those points of interest. So there you go. Two visual triangles going on there. Now, what am I working on? So this cluster on the left-hand side, I, I decided to use one of the rocket pieces because I haven't used any of those for a little while and I thought it would work perfectly with this theme. So I pulled one of those out, tucked along the left-hand side there. I've also got a die-cut ticket that I used for layering underneath it. And down the bottom there, I've got a, oh, I think it's a label or a ticket piece, also from the die-cut ephemera pack. I've layered it with that unlimited piece. I have, I've stuck a phrase sticker on there from the accessory sticker sheet. And I just want to, you can just watch me fiddle around with these clusters. I've got stars and other things from the die cut ephemera pack. I want to draw your attention up to that little rocket that is at the top there because I didn't talk about it yet. I fussy cut that little rocket from one of the stickers on the accessory sticker sheet. It's actually a tag and it had the, this printed on it. I really wanted to add a little rocket up there, but the ones in the embellishment, in the die cut ephemera pack are quite large and I wanted something to appear like it was way off in the distance. And when I saw this printed on the sticker, I knew it was perfect. So I just fussy cut it from that tag shaped sticker and popped it up there in the sky. Now I'm actually going back in with my Stabilo All Pencil here. There was quite a lot of doodling on this page for me. I haven't done a lot of doodling lately. Um, I find this really freeing to do on your page, much like kids enjoy the freedom of drawing and being able to express themselves with pencils. Um, I kind of went a little bit nuts with my pencil and it was so much fun. So you can see that I've added a little bit of light around the moon. I've also added um, some trails coming off, more trails coming off from behind the rocket just to give it a bit more of a sense of movement. And I went through and I doodled some little stars, some little crosses as well, just to add some extra stars to that background. And then I went in with my Dilutions white ink and added some white splatters because I really wanted some like bright white to pop from the background. 
Um, besides using acrylic paint, and I didn't want to go to all the mess of mixing up some acrylic paint with water to use for splatters, uh, my preferred splatters are using my Dilutions ink spray because I find it gives a nice crisp white on the page, providing you use fair, you've got to use fairly thick drops to get it white and you've got to leave it alone to dry naturally too because if you try and hit it with a heat gun or dab at it, you're just going to dull the white down. Now, I decided to go back in with a few extra embellishments. I added a couple of the epoxy wood buttons because I wanted to add some more circular pieces. And then I went in with the puffy sticker pack and I added some stars and some little planets and things just to add extra interest around the page. And that was it. That was everything on this page. Thank you so much for watching today. It was good to be back with all of you. If you have enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, a question, whatever. I love your feedback. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.